Well, there are comments in my video when I mention that we, uh, that living creatures apparently defy the laws of physics every day, um, every action that they take. You know, I did say apparently, but let me explain this because I got a lot of comments about, oh, it can't defy the laws of physics. Well, what do you mean the laws of physics? The laws of physics are things humans have written down, trying to model the way reality works. But is it laws in nature? No. Is it necessarily a rule as we think of it? No. Is it necessarily anything that we've characterized it as? No, it's a phenomena that we need to study more fully. And when we say that something defies a law of physics, we're talking about it defying these laws as we've formulated them, meaning we need to reformulate. So yes, of course, everything is going to obey the laws of physics in the end by definition, because we're going to figure out what's going on in nature and we're going to create our laws or rules or whatever the objects of our conception, we're going to create those to fit reality. When we say that nature is defying the laws of physics, we're saying that the laws of physics are out of date or obsolete or no longer good enough. We are saying we have evidence we need a new law of physics, a new understanding of physics. Okay? It's similar to the idea that things are not what they appear, but how do you find out what they really are? You look at the appearances more closely. You pursue the appearances because things aren't what they appear, but that doesn't make sense, does it? Well, it does, because when we say things aren't as they appear, they mean that it appears our model is insufficient. It appears our model of what we thought was appearing to be the case was insufficient. We have to change that. We have to make it so, that, once again, we have to change our ideas so that things do fit how they appear to be, so that the models fit the apparent facts and so on. So I thought I'd clarify that because, yes, of course, we're trying to discover these laws of physics. When we say something defies the laws of physics, that means it, it, it works in accordance to some law we haven't discovered yet. And, and that's what that means. And it's really, um, it's really not that confusing. Once you start realizing a lot of the things that we think are in the real world reference, we are really referring to things in our mind. And that's the same thing with this ontology stuff that I'll go into. To me, the subjects of ontology are always ideas because they can't be things in the real world because we don't ascertain things. You know, can't study ontology and say, what is a horse? What am I? Because what do, how do I know anything about the horse or me? Well, I get thousands of perceptions and I bundle them together into this model that I call this object and it's that object that goes in the ontology. Therefore, ideas go in ontology. Therefore, the study of ontology as such does not impress me. But I do do ontological um, you know, ontological exercises, and I do an ontological analysis of any given, of any given system that I'm working with. But then I just enumerate what ideas uh, are required to um, make up the idea, the system, make up the idea of the system. And um, that's very different than thinking you can study something like ontology directly as though it's a study of being, and that you would go find out some answers about what it is without reference to epistemology, and yet the only way you get Knowledge is through these little bits of information known as perceptions, which collect in an epistemological way, and then we assert the reality of something as being, etc., etc. All of this stuff becomes more clear, at least you can see how I'm thinking of it, if you remember that often the subjects, uh, the, the objects rather, of, uh, that we're referring to are ideas, are ideas, not, not reality. We can't refer to reality directly. And another mistake is that people sometimes mistake chronological necessity with, um, with a kind of a logical, fundamental necessity. So that the things that we have received because we're biological creatures and we're born with an intact brain, um, that those somehow get confused between the incidentalness of that, that really those are a result of previous creatures' experiences, versus the idea that, well, therefore, it's a metaphysics. Everything that you have in your brain, you have to assume is a metaphysics, because that's how your brain works, and that's a, your, your starting point. Yeah, that's my starting point, but it's a cognitive science issue. It's not, you know, it's not a matter of uh, pretending that there's a priori ideas just because there's ideas before we exist. So anyway.